Hello fellow Dolly and welcome back to the Masters of Innovation. We're going to be continuing the campaign with Malachi McKyson to basically uh, bring back Dolly dominance and let's let's not be uh, beat around the bush here. We're getting pretty close. Like if we take a look, one of the big grudges that I've been wanting to do is this legendary retake the realms grudge. We are very close to finishing that. We just got to finish off Death Pass and the Southern World's Edge Mountains which is very, very close to being done. I think like five or six settlements away. So we're in a very good position. Uh, that said, we do have a lot of troops all over the Warhammer world here. Um, so we've got a lot of fighting going on. I have slightly delayed the invasion of Nagarond, which isn't as necessary. Um, and I need to to take care of some other things. Now, we do have a whole bunch of different quest battles that we need to do. And I'm going to go take a look at those real quick because I'm probably like it's been forever since I, I just haven't needed the quest battles or I've been too busy for it. Um, but I mean, you should definitely be doing these. But like, for instance, Malachi's army, we can teleport to that one. So let's see what other. So Malachi, Thorgrim, 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 Gromby, Gromby. All right, so Malachi has one, the eyes of Grungni that we need to fight. Um, let's take Malachi out of the settlement and let's go ahead and warp in and fight that battle. We haven't replenished, but we should be able to win that battle is just fine. Uh, let's go ahead and head into the objectives and let's teleport over to the battle. And it looks like we're going to be fighting some Druki, so maybe a little bit of a window into what the invasion of Nagarond will eventually look like. Uh, let's go ahead and fight this one. It was a canny trick our brother used in bringing us here. I'd expect nothing less of an engineer. Now, safety's off, lads. Let's free our king with our Ungi ally, shall we? I bet there's all kinds of poor stats trapped in those mines. Our engineer friend can free him. If we provide some good old black powder distraction. Those dark elf wazics aren't gonna know what's hit them. Whatever that black arc throws at us, we'll crack their heads and send them packing back to Nagy. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Like the the black arc out there in the background. Yeah, there. That's awesome, man. It gives you an idea of the scale of black arcs too. And I I know there's some people who are gonna disagree with this, and it's fine. You're totally at rights to to like what you want to like. But like, I I feel like Warhammer is so good for Total War, and Total War is so good for Warhammer. <laughs> I just I don't know that I can ever go back to I, I mean I want to I just I don't know like I'm skeptical can historical total war really ever be this good I, I just I'm not convinced that it can <laughs> I'm, I'm not convinced that it can maybe I'm wrong and that would be something that I would be perfectly happy to be wrong about um, it's not like I want uh, like Total War historical to never be good again, but I'm just saying, like, I have a hard time, I have a hard time imagining it. Um, just seems difficult. Anyway, I, and it was funny because I remember whenever they announced Total War Warhammer, I was not happy. I did not think it was going to be good. I didn't know what Warhammer was. When I first saw it, I thought it was dumb. And then CA took us to the event and I'm a fairly open-minded individual. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. We're going to, we're going to play it. And it did not take me long. To realize just how cool it was going to be. All right, there are a ton of dark shards here. It's going to make life very difficult for both our Thunder Barge and our Gyro. So I'm actually just going to pull back for a moment. We're going to take out that Reaper Bolt Thrower so that it can't uh, damage us from range. Oh, that was a gruesome shot. We've destroyed two of their artillery pieces. We've only got one left. And I am going to let my cannons take it out. That should do. And now I'm going to start targeting different Dark Shard units. And we're going to start ripping down Dark Shards. They are the next greatest threat to us. And 
and none of what the Druki bring in melee is any significant threat to me. I will switch to Grape Shot, by the way, whenever range affords us that opportunity. But we should still be able to cause pretty good damage against these tightly packed formations of Dark Shards. Get you all some close-ups while we're in here. It's the Druki Lord there. Now, they may start hitting us with some bombardments from that Black Arc based on what we were hearing at first. I wouldn't be surprised, in fact. His uh, Sisters of Slaughter. I couldn't remember the name there, so we got some Sisters of Slaughter coming towards us. And they're going to start firing on our heroes. I'm actually going to back up just a little, try and draw the AI in a little closer. I'm going to take my cannons, um, and we're going to move into Grape Shot. This is going to reduce our... Oh, we can't do Grape Shot on this one because it's got that homing thing on it. That's annoying. I'm going to probably take the homing stuff off. I don't find it to be very good. All right, so the Grape Shot is ready to go. I'm going to just target our standard shot out here still. All right, my Thunderers are opening fire. Malachi is opening fire. I'm going to summon the Spirit of Grungmi right up on top of this blob. And once I start to control those Dark Shards, uh, we're going to start pushing in with our, our aircraft as well. And we are certainly starting to control those Dark Shards at this point. Spirit of Grungmi is coming in with a big bang here, quite literally. Just absolutely doused these Druki here in the middle. Um, let's take our two Grape Shot cannons and find them a new target. And then our standard cannon will target this one here. We're going to keep driving out the enemies. So my second airship is moving in. The number of Dark Shards left is not going to be significant enough to bring down our airships. Dark Shards are a very real threat to your Thunder Barge, and they need to be dealt with. Now, a Thunder Barge can, in turn, do tremendous damage to Dark Shards, but the favor will be returned. It is not going to be a, a one-way avenue there. So, the Grape Shot here working absolute wonders. Uh, it says reinforcements from the Black Ark have arrived, so that means they're probably going to be coming up from my flank over there. Yep, let's... Uh, but we've got reinforcements as well. All right, so we have taken out this army. I'm going to actually rotate and get ready to face the new reinforcements. And let's take our air force and go see what we can figure out here. I'm going to try and get rid of that lord. Let's take um, two heroes and put them back out in front of the army. I like kind of using them to bait the enemy troops in. There's going to be a few troops that come back from routing off to our flank here, but we can we can manage those. All right, the enemy lord went down. In fact, I'm going to take these gyros and see if I can put some pain into these. We do have the spears of Grungmi. I'm, I don't know if they get affected by the trees or not. Let's find out. The spear of Grungmi would be good against this war hydra. It went through the trees and it scored a direct hit, so it was either luck or it may not impact it's badly. Let's hit that War Hydra with a second spear. There it goes. Did not hit a tree and snagged the Hydra dead on. All right, I'm going to pull these back a little bit closer to the main lines because they are slow. Mo oh, there's the bombardment starting up. It's a Doom Bolt, actually, I think off of a Doomfire Warlock. I am going to shift the Slayer Pirate more to this flank. All right, my cannons, I, two of them are still in the um, grape shot mode. I'm going to try and get the attention of this War Hydra here with Gotrek and Felix. And we do have its attention. We want to drag it back over here in front of our guns and our cannons. It's routing now because of damage sustained. We've got Empire and Dawi allies, I think. I thought we would have Empire allies that mentioned them, but I don't see any here. So never mind. I guess that... Uh, the Umgi, or whatever they call the, the Empire, did not come to our assistance. I'm going to counter charge that Doomfire Warlock, and I'm going to start shooting these Harpies. My cannons, I did not put them into a defensive stance, so we're going to have a little bit of an issue there. Uh, we need to shoot this War Hydra. 
What do we got down here? Is that the Truki Lord? No, just a master. Um, let's use some of our abilities here. I'm not very good at remembering to crank these off, but they will certainly help us. War Hydra's going down. Our Slayer Pirates shot down the Harpies, and we've got our um, Thunder Barges kind of hanging out over the battlefield here. Let's go. Oh, there's a couple of... Oh, boy, that Black Art Corsair got shredded by my Gyros. Let's see if we can shred the other one. Those tight formations they are going to afford my, my troops a lot of hits. Oh, yeah, good hits there. Now, they'll do a lot of damage to me in return, so we got to be careful. There's another one approaching my flank. So those Black Art Corsairs trying to get to my flank, but I'm going to move a little bit and take away their range and then continue to bombard this unit. Awesome. All right, we got rid of the War Hydra, which means that we are pretty well done here. It says the Dark Elves have been defeated and their troops run. The captives are free to return home, and the Master Engineer pledges his allegiance. So there we go. We've defeated the Druki Slavers and freed our fellow Dawi from the captivity here in the mines. All right, well, that was very successful. Um, we won that battle quite handily. Got a ton of kills with Airship 1 and our cannons. I'm going to take this rune off. Like, it's honestly useless. Um, I don't find a whole lot of value to it. Like, I mean, if you look, the other cannons are able to do just as much damage, and then I can't use Grape Shot, which I don't like taking away that flexibility. I'm going to get the extra Oath Gold and Treasury, I think. I don't know, though. We're kind of in enemy territory. I'm going to replenish. I, I'm not super worried about enemies overrunning us, um, but there we go. We finished the Eyes of Grungni, which is going to give us more loot post battle, um, increase our ambush chance, reduce reload time, which, of course, just basically increases our missile damage. And then we get this Eyes of Grungni ability. It's a passive within 55 meters. It increases range and missile damage. So probably something we should have gotten a long time ago. But we did not because I'm a goof and it is what it is. But now we've completed this armor and it's going to provide a 10% boost to research faction wide and reduce upkeep on artillery and increases missile strength. So a nice little benefit there. So good stuff. Um, let's head over to Thorgrim. And speaking of Thorgrim, our good old High King needs to uh, take care of some skill points first and then we'll go in. We got fire support. That sounds really exciting and then it's not. Um, Let's see, unbreakable when fighting against enemies with 1,000 plus crutches. <laughs> uh, that'd be pretty fun. Um, let's do that. That's a nice change of that ability. Let's go to Mentor here as well, so that we can spread some of that experience down to our newer lords. And we have many at this point. Let's do the same thing there. Mentor, spread that experience out. Ulrika is going to level up. Lightning fast, missile resistance, it'd probably be good for her, but we also probably want to maybe start with increased mobility. And then Ungrim leveled up here. He has got a ton of skill points. Probably ought to put one in the Dawi Firepower, finish that up. Let's take a look at his engineer here. Let's get Flash Bomb and Triangulation. And then the Dragon Slayer here. We can give it uh, the Big Game Slayer, which is going to give us nice stuff there. Let's do that. Let's go Big Game Slayer. And let's look for more skill ups. Got one here with one of our uh, Rune Lords. And let's just uh, maybe start off by working on some of their red skills there. Um, that should be good for this turn for that army. Let's go find... Thorgrim, which is actually right here. He has a very badly damaged Thunder Barge. Um, but we could probably still accomplish his battles. Let's maybe let that Thunder Barge heal a turn. And then we will go use Thorgrim. I'm going to go take a look for Gromby and see if I can remember what he's up to right now. He's in a lot better shape to go get in a fight. And this, I think, is actually Grom... Or that might be Thorgrim's. No, it's a Grombrindle battle. All right, well, let's do that. And then we don't even have to pay to teleport, so that'll be absolutely perfect. Get another quest battle out of the way here. This one's going to be against Club Armbreaker. And uh, if anybody's going to be having any broken arms today, it is certainly going to be him because Grombrindle's way too angry. At last, we have lured the orcs to the place we Dowie fight best in Grungi's realm. 
I see beside me brave dwarfen hearts. Such courage will imbue my rune helm. This is the day to strike many grudges from the Great Book. For I am a white dwarf, and only worthy folk appear in my pages. So, let us record great deeds this day, and give these Urkis scum a right royal hammering! All right, we've got the battle rolling. Um, we've got baddies coming in behind us immediately. Ooh, I gotta slow it down. I forgot that you're gonna get attacked from behind in this battle. I'm gonna let my artillery keep moving. And I'm gonna turn around some of my infantry. I'm gonna keep some up front because we could very well get attacked there. Also, let's bring our gyro bombers over to help control some of this. Like we could get attacked from here or this other side here. I wouldn't be surprised. That was the case, but I need to leave some troops to kind of keep my artillery safe, but we're going to go after these squig hoppers, so let us take care of business. Um, I might bring... Yeah, I got the gyro bombers for range, so we should be good. Um, let's get in here and intercept. All right, I was going to kind of sit there and charge. I got to intercept all these squigs. I'm going to turn around so we can shoot the squigs. They're probably going to make a run for my artillery pieces. That does appear to be what they're doing. But I think we have them stopped, at least for the moment. We got to drive them out. Let's um, let's keep moving this whole force forward. All right, my slayers are doing a good job. Unsurprisingly, not to mention they had the fire support from the uh, gyro bombers, which gyro bombers have a nice gun on them now. They're really quite a nice dual purpose unit. I'm going to uh, I'm not going to thunderburn because I don't have a, a whole bunch of hit points. I was thinking about thunderburning across there, but that is, I think, going to be ill advised at this point. We're going to have to watch out for units that come back from routing. So I'm going to put a few shots into those squigs that are on the way out the door, we're going to make sure and chase these units full on off of the battlefield or else I do expect that they'll come back for a second run. I'm going to go ahead and start pushing these units back towards the front line now. As we drove those squigs out from behind us. We've got our big boys moving. I'm going to move these thunderers up. Send Gromby running. Let's get our infantry on the move again. And I'm going to go ahead and move my cannons. Oh, gosh, that's a freaking Arachnorok spider right behind me. We just got absolutely swarmed. I haven't played this battle in forever. OK, that's not good. That's not good. I'm going to start hitting these guys with some of the ammo that does some suppression work. Uh, I'm going to turn around some of my infantry. I'll send uh, I'll send Gromby up here to go help. But we're going to have to turn around and face some of the stuff. Our cannons, I'm going to actually leave the guns and just move the crews out of danger. And bring my crews to intercept all these trolls and other units there. That should work. We do have a couple of spiders that are going to need to go down. I'm going to bash these trolls to death real quick with some gunfire. And we'll beat back this little rear attack here. My slayers are getting torn up pretty hard by that spider. I'm going to actually move them out of there. And I'm going to take my three thunderers and give the spider some attention that it would probably rather not have. Okay, I'm going to move these cannon crews back behind those thunderers to a safe distance. Ooh, that giant is giving us some unpleasant business right now. Okay, I'm going to get my thunders working on that giant. Okay, we drove off some of these units. Got one more spider to work out of there. Nice. All right, that giant's going down. And our allies have beaten back their enemies here as well. So interesting battle. Getting attacked from the flanks and stuff kind of makes things fun. Keeps you on your toes there. 
There we go. Oh, we defeated old knob nails and the tunnel boys. So now we don't have to, or the tunnel mob, whatever it called them there. So it's going to be a good victory for us. I'm going to take the replenishment here so we'll be ready to fight on the next turn. We picked up the room, Rune Helm of Zuffbar, which is going to give 10 armor, better chances of intercepting, physical resistance, and then the special passive there that gives plus 12 leadership to everybody inside of a 35 meter radius. That's going to be success. I do think I'm going to push a little farther forward here. Uh, there will probably be just fighting another battle at the end of this one. Let's start building up our gold mine at Mount Gunbad. Um, we're going to be making a tremendous amount of Oath Gold each turn, and I am absolutely here for it. Looks like we are moving up. Someone reminded me that this vampire spawn out here, which I can't declare war on, which was strange enough, is because of the tombs that we're trying to build. It says warning undead will try everything in their power to stop the purging. <laughs> so yeah, I might want to actually go defend this. Like, you know, that's not the smartest decision I've ever made, but now I've moved my army off already. So I may need to turn this army around and head back that direction. I don't have another one in range, so this is probably not good. But I've left Silver Pinnacle so exposed without much of a garrison. So probably not, yeah, probably not the brightest idea that I've ever had. So we're going to need to do something about that. And I just don't have uh, an army to move there at the moment. If I could use the underway, I might be able to move one of these. But um, I'm going to move up on this Beastman army. I'm hoping that we can catch them in the underground. We've got to finish them off and kind of rebuild the things that we had back here. I'm going to go take a look at our buildings to see if there's any good places like see this is a little bit of easy income there um i'm looking for easy oath gold trade income like lower level stuff that's going to be real simple um the higher level upgrades i'll get to but like for instance this is got to be some extra oath gold right there oath gold and the chimera mountain or chimera plateau Bedrock Gap. Giant Oak Mountains. Again, I'm just looking to see if there's any level one stuff we want to build, and then I'll come back and start adding on top. I don't know. This is a pretty easy grab right there, though. Give us some good extra cash. Just that level two. Got the Oath Gold going there. Northern Waste. Got our gold mine there. Started the new Oath Gold buildings. I'm going to actually go ahead and build that one larger in that main chain settlement. I guess I'll go ahead and do that one, too. Might as well. Each time we build one of these, it's going to give us more income, but it's also going to give us 10 more Oath Gold per turn. And I am going to really, really ramp into the Oath Gold here hard. Silver Pin Pinnacle, I need to tear that down and build a different building. Um, all right, so we're going to tear those down. Again, I'm trying to focus all of my buildings possible into oath gold and we will do that as much as we can here um starting to be out of money here let's repair that i'm gonna save what little bit of cash i have left let's take a look at the lord not moves things uh this is one of the armies that we took over from clan angrand i need extra armies over here to help defend against the vampire. These are too far away from that. I'm trying to recruit another one here at Barak Var. I might do the same with that army, so I'm going to skip that one. And then I am recruiting a Thunder Barge and more units into Belagar's army as well at Karak Ezor. Man, I wish I could recruit Thunder Barges locally. That'd be fantastic, but I can't at the moment. Um, let's see, unassigned skill points, that's going to go to Gromby and his engineers. So, let's see, let's finish Sapper and let's do Relentless. Who calls me? And with Gromby, let's see, he's got Lightning Strike, got all of his special abilities except for this one here. Let's go ahead and give that one. That one's not bad. And we got the Thane. Let's do the Unfaltering. Give him more hit points. And then Dawi Authority is Control. 
Let's do this one right there. That's a nice one. No other skill points. We got heroes that weren't moved. These heroes were way off in foreign territory. I don't think that they are needed. Already got yeah, Thane in that army, so I might just disband these Thanes. Let's go to that one. So let's... I disbanded some units earlier that I probably shouldn't have, but I'm not feeling too worried about these. Master Engineer. Did I recruit the Master Engineer here? I don't remember that. Maybe he was injured. I don't believe that I have need of a Master Engineer up here. Yeah, I mean, nowhere in this vicinity. Oh, is this the Engineer we got from the quest battle, I think? Yeah. I think it's the Engineer we got from the quest battle. Um, can we enter that with him? Or does it have to be an army? Yeah, it has to be an army. All right, I'm just going to disband this guy, too. I don't know. Is he special? Does he have, like, something special here? Wounds. Could be a special unit that we picked up. I don't really know. Um, let's... I don't even know what to do with this guy. How about I just start walking him down here, and then I can decide whether I really want to do anything with him along the way. But he's got about 7,000 miles to walk if he is going to get there. And I'm going to go ahead and end the turn. It's like we're going to catch the ogres. Um, this is Joseph Whitebeard. Uh, I mean, if the ogres can't get in here to take out these goblin hewers, it is going to wreak absolute havoc on all these gigantic units. Not going to go well for ogres. And we, we have a lot of slayers, so also not going to go well for ogres. So let's go fight this one. Oh, check it out. They've got a... Uh, what do they call this beast? The uh, Stonehorn? I got two hunters on stone horns and then another one on foot. So, oh, they got a scrap launcher as well. And it sucks. I don't want to mess with the scrap launcher right now. I think I might actually swing around and go get that scrap launcher with these gyros. So I'm going to handle that. My flame cannons, we learned, actually do nice damage uh, to ogres. So that was uh, something that I hadn't expected, but... It ended up being the case. Why Why are you guys acting all stupid here? You're getting shot up too by that stone horn. I gave him like a... an order to go move around all this stuff and scooch in. So I'm going to go do that. Um, go see if we can take him out. Alright, yeah, flame cannons are firing and they're getting some good damage done. I'm going to pause it real quick and... We got Iron Guts, Iron Guts, or, or sorry, Iron Fist. Iron Fist are not the biggest worry to me. Iron Guts are because they do the AP damage, so I'm just going to let my units keep firing here. Flame Cannons are doing some very nice damage. Let's pick some new targets, weaken them up a little. I do have my leaders kind of right out front. We'll want to be ready to reinforce them as needed. That Stonehorn is following me. That's actually really not good because he is going to hurt my gyros quite badly. He is very quick, too, to stay in range. I'm going to turn around and shoot this scrap launcher real quick, and then i got to keep moving. Yeah, that, that hunter fired on me quicker than I could. Yeah, I'm going to run back here and see if we can just lure him away from the fight. All right, everything's good so far in the fight. Um, our goblin hewers are making extremely short work. Look, you can see the units just disappearing up here from the goblin hewers. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. I got a goblin hewer right here. Let's see if we can get after the slaughter master. And I will try and slow him down a little, make him an easier target. All right, get him, boys. There comes the goblin hewer. Watch him just disappear. Oh, yeah. We had our Slayer Pirates there, too, which are adding extra pain into the fight. Wow, that hunter is just like he is. He is a hunter like he is 100 percent determined to get a hold of my gyrocopters at any cost and the any cost being the key there. I'm going to take out this hunter. We got another one back there, too. Let's see if we can get rid of them. I'm going to come over here and try and get these last few remaining knife throwing nobbler trappers all right see so we can get rid of those guys flame cannons are actually doing really really good right there can i goblin hewer that 
Uh, let's see if I can get the Goblin Hewer into that Stone Horn. That'd be cool. All right, so I flew past them. They still got their stupid Scrap Launcher back there, too, but I just can't really do anything about it right now. All right, oh yeah, he's gonna get melted. We got a Goblin Hewer and Flame Cannons going after him. Does have a lot of armor, so the Flame Cannons may not do quite as much, but the Goblin Hewer, what ammo it has left, ought to be pretty effective there. I'm sick of these stupid Nobbler Trappers out here throwing their knives at me. All right. Stonehorn Beast is slowly being worked down. The Goblin Hewer used all of its ammo. Not really surprised. They used their ammo really quickly. I think the Scrap Launcher is still firing at my Gyrocopter as well. What is keeping the Ogres in this fight? This doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever right now for the Ogres to be in this fight. Like, their army is absolutely shredded. Like, it's bananas. There's, they have no hope. This is a no-hope scenario. Alright, we got a lot of firepower getting buried in that stone horn. The one stone horn's gonna get away. This one quite possibly gonna get away as well. It's got a lot of hit points left, and I'll only be able to hit it with the gyrocopter here soon. Boy, those goblin hewers, they ran out of ammo in a big hurry, but they caused some absolutely... Wow, that was some sweet friendly fire there. Parked my flame or, uh, my gyros right in the line of fire for my flame cannons. Um, let's see if we can kill this thing on the way out the door. I would like to kill it, but I forgot we can fire whilst moving, so I'll just keep following it. We're gonna keep shooting this thing in the butt. It's got a lot of hit points and a lot of armor, so it is not an easy kill, even when you're using the right type of units like I am. So you can see we're really eating away, but just when you have that many hit points. It's going to get away. It still had a thousand hit points left. That army was actually very well suited to killing ogres. Um, better than I would have thought initially when taking it on. I'm going to go ahead and replenish because, again, we're fairly close to enemy territory. I think that was the one headed to Eagle Iris, that particular army. But we need to get back and protect our settlement from the vampires as well because they might go in and destroy it while I'm gone. It wouldn't let me declare war on that faction, so I'm assuming they might come and declare war on me. But it wasn't going to let me preemptively kill them, which is, again, kind of strange. You would think it would let me just attack them if I'm having to defend that from them. But, uh, let's see. So, Mount Silverspear. So we just took over. We need to defend against those vampires. Honestly, this army is closest to the vampires. And I can start working my way back that way in a hurry to get in their way. And that army ought to be fairly well suited to slow down some vampires. Maybe not the best one that we have, but it should be effective nonetheless. I'm going to move Ungram out and I'm going to just put him in the underground movement there. And we'll take Ungram and put some more pressure on those ogres. Then we've got an army here. Not a total army, but it should be good enough to probably either put some pain. Um, is it going to be good enough, though? What do we come up against here? I can surround them and move Grombrindle in. Um, let's do that. Well, never mind. It's going to give me the easy win here, so there's really not a whole lot to worry about. Um, Strider? So extra speed, Wayfarer, and then it gives them way better acceleration. Interesting. Um, I mean, the gyro is really the fastest moving thing here. I don't know. I mean, maybe on the Slayer, that could be kind of cool. Extra charge bonus. Um, I mean, none of our units are going to really be using a charge bonus very much. So we can just drop it on a Dwarf Warrior, and then we've got this leadership, which again, maybe just put that on a Dwarf Warrior. I'm going to go ahead and auto-resolve this. Not a battle that I particularly want to fight here, but should go in our favor nonetheless. Um, Karak Drawn gets us, I believe, one step closer to at, uh, holding Death Pass. Yep, so now we just got to take Black Crag. And then with Gromby, I am going to go in here and warp to one more of these battles. That one's a Thorgrim, Thorgrim, Thorgrim. And Cloak of Alea here. Let's go ahead and teleport to that one. 
And we'll get another quest battle done. Our goddess has spoken to me. She who prepares the hearth, who secures our holds. Escobar have been caught sneaking about like ratmen filth, trying to gain access to our mountains unseen. Well, I see you, scum, and by Valea's cloak, I'll have every last rotten one of you back in that ground, pushing up your tombstones! If battle's going, the vampires are going to have very little answer to a thunder barge, so of course I'm going to hover right up over their face. If I remember right, I do believe this is a battle where we're going to get attacked from behind as well. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. I've kept some reinforcements back here just in case because I feel extremely confident that we're going to be able to mercilessly slay uh, vampires here. And it has been utterly merciless, at least thus far. My thunderers are just shredding enemy lines. I'm going to go after their lord with Gromby. And I switched all of my cannons, by the way, into Grape Shot. I'm going to attack that Grave Guard over here. Hopefully we don't get friendly fire. We very well might, because it's getting pretty tight here. Um, getting a little concerned about friendly fire because they're firing late. I'm going to actually change that target farther out there just because of how close that is getting. And I'm going to pull these guys behind the light. My Norgrimling's Iron Breakers just lit them up. Um, oh, yep, there's the reinforcements coming in from her flank. That is going to be some Terror Geist. Um, we need to get our... Thunderers in a position to shoot those terror guys. Sent some reinforcements that way. Our slayers should be able to get a good start on them. All right, yeah, here comes all the flyers coming in trying to haunt us. But I don't think this is going to go well for him. Let's move the thunder barge over that direction. I'm going to start targeting a terror geist. I'm going to move my cannons back out of the way over here a little bit. Oh, never mind. There they come from the other side. Yeah, this is indeed what I remembered. Vargeist are attacking me there. Oh, crap, my gyros. Um, I'm going to bring the gyros over here and land them. So I'm going to land and then fly through my warriors here. I told my gyros to land, but they're not doing it, so I'm going to come attack this graveguard. I've got to get these bats off me. It's a terror geist down here, too, though. I can't get my gyros to land. All right, so we've got a bunch of annoying units back here. Let's get after these vargeist. I think they're done swamping me from behind here. Some of those bats finally came down, and I was able to get my... Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now we're back in control here. Let's finish massacring these undead filth. Move our cannons away from there. The Vargeist are going down. And this should pretty much be it. These Vargeist ought to crumble here at any moment. There we go. Oh, man, a little bit of friendly fire there. One of my Thunderers definitely took the worst of that exchange. There goes the Vargeist. Okay, quit shooting before you hit us. Um, my main line held up very well there. Let's. Oh, we're done. All right, well, that was quite successful for us. I'm going to go ahead and replenish again just to keep our armies up at strength. we got the Cloak of Valea now, and we've still got more quest battles to do, but I would say that uh, I am out of time. It was a pretty successful episode for us. I'm going to save some Oath Cold for one more turn, and then we'll get into that forge and make sure we spin that and um, put it to good use. We've obviously got a lot of work to do here. Um, Malachi is free to, to dish out some more beatings, um, which we will be dishing out freely and frequently to our enemies, especially these Norskin filth here. Um, I'm going to head into the airship and camp stance. I'm going to get rid of this guy and then head into the encamp stance with the airship. I wish they'd fix that rune with the homing missiles. It's really bad. Like, it'd be, it'd be cool if it was actually good. But not to say that we don't have strong enough artillery. We absolutely do. So it's not like it's a absolute necessity. It just, it would, it would be nice. Anyway, we'll start off the next episode with some uh, 
quest battles for Thorgrim. We are sitting on a ton of money. We've got a whole bunch to spend on buildings. Again, we'll take care of all that next time. Hopefully you all enjoyed this one. Air of Carthage signing out for now, and I will see you all soon with some more action in Total War Warhammer 3.